It's getting kind of late. Figured I might find some of you on Facebook tonight. I'm standing outside our church building. It's pretty quiet out here. All I can hear is uh, uh, the wind blowing a little bit. Every once in a while a car goes behind me on the street here. Tomorrow morning we're going to meet together at 11 a.m. for our worship service. And I, I'm like a lot of other pastors that are on live uh, Facebook right now. If you come across our feed and you want to join in with us, we'd love to have you. I'll be bringing another message again tomorrow night at 6.30 also. And uh, I'll be inside the church then and be bringing that message. I'm, I'm kind of using this opportunity to test our signal and make sure we can communicate better and more effectively with all my friends and family and the members of our church and this community. See, I have no idea how many people might come across our broadcast of the services. I have no idea what everybody has need of out there, but I know there are a lot of needs. I was thinking tonight as I was uh, thinking about testing the system, I, I was thinking tonight, I wonder 2,000 years ago, all of the, all of the uh, circumstance of Good Friday was over. All that was left was the moments of grieving, sadness, sorrow. Jesus Christ had spent time with some disciples and he had touched so many people's lives in so many different ways. And every time he ministered to somebody, he was always representing the love of God, the power of God, the authority of God. He was always demonstrating to the watching world just how much God loves humanity. And I just started thinking tonight as I was coming back over to the church, as I was walking through our sanctuary, and I was imagining where people sit, sit in the sanctuary and the different seats that they're in and the faces that are usually there. I thought to myself, I thought, Easter Sunday, just a few hours from now, We should be getting together in a place of worship and celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But I started thinking, I wonder what the disciples and Jesus' mother, the friends of Jesus like Mary and Martha, I wonder what so many of those characters of the Bible so many of those people in the New Testament that Jesus touched, I wonder what they were doing between the, the crucifying of Jesus Christ and Sunday morning. What were they doing? Were they together and rehearsing the things that Jesus did for them? Could you imagine Peter rehearsing with the rest of the disciples that Jesus had told him to put the net on the other side of the ship in one of his fishing excursions and, and he does it with some reluctance and then he gets a whole bunch of fish? Or could you imagine Peter retelling the story of, of uh, getting in the ship being told by Jesus to go to the other side and he'd meet them there and, and in the middle of the in the middle of the sea there's a storm and Jesus comes walking on water. I can almost imagine that every one of those stories would have meant something so much more in the aftermath of his death. I think those stories would have meant so much more in the lives of the people that were listening to those stories. Could you imagine the passion that Peter and the other disciples and the lives of other people that have been touched by Jesus, can you imagine what their, their passion would have been 
as they talked about Jesus. Maybe their lives were just sad. Maybe they were just full of tears. Maybe they had a big lump in their throat and they didn't even, and they couldn't even speak. Maybe there's just so much grief in their hearts. I wonder, I wonder if those people that had turned their back on Jesus the day before, or a couple of days before saying, crucify him, I wonder if there was any sadness in their hearts that maybe they did the wrong thing. Maybe there was a conviction of guilt because they took the wrong steps. Maybe they got caught up in a, a moment of a riot and, and didn't realize what they were really doing. I mean, after all, Jesus, when he was hanging on the cross, said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. This time in my life and my ministry has me questioning things like the details more than ever before in my entire life and ministry. It's one thing for us to look at the event of Good Friday and for us to look at the event of Resurrection Sunday. But I wanted to just take a moment and make us pause and think, what was it like in between? What was it like for the disciples the, the night, the two nights, the three, you know, as they were waiting to see what would happen after the Passover? I mean, what was the conversation? Can I leave you one, with one thought? Jesus said to the disciples that it was expedient that he went away because God was going to send another comforter to be with them. I wonder, I wonder if, I wonder if on their in-between moments, I wonder if they rehearsed in their minds all the promises that Jesus made. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'm the bread of life. I'm the, I'm the good shepherd. I am... Um, I am your life, the resurrection and life. I wonder if in those in-between moments, the people that knew Jesus best, I wonder if they were rehearsing those thoughts. Ladies and gentlemen, there's never been a time in my lifetime that I have been challenged like I am right now with a desire to reach as many people as I possibly can. And I guarantee you, every single pastor right now is feeling that same burning desire to have an impact on somebody else's life right now, to get the gospel to as many people as possible. You see, you might be like the disciples. You might be an in-between place. You might be in kind of a hallway feeling that you're not really where you need to be, but you're not really where you were before, and so you're kind of in between. Somebody's going to stumble across this little news feed tonight or this little live feed tonight. Somebody's going to stumble across this face looking into a camera and trying to share a few thoughts of encouragement. There's one thing I do that I know is what God has called me to do, and that's to preach the Word of God. But as a part of my ministry, something else that God has called me to is to be a person of prayer. I don't keep my prayers perfectly. I probably don't pray as long as I ought to pray. But I believe in the power of prayer. And in the quietness of this moment, if you're willing to, wherever you are, wherever you're watching this, if you're willing to just bow your head with me and just have a word of prayer, it would mean so much. If you were to die today and you were to meet God, if, if there is a God, I believe there is, but if you were to meet God face to face and he were to ask you, why should he let you into his heaven? If heaven exists, I believe it does, but some may be out there wondering. If heaven really does exist and there is a God who is in control of that heaven and he determines who comes in and who goes out of heaven or out of his presence, how 
If he asks you, why should I let you into my heaven, what do you say? If you start giving him a lot of rhymes and reasons, if you start giving him a lot of things that you've done and you've not done, I'm going to tell you right now, none of that is going to matter. Eternity will have already been set for you. The one thing that will matter is if you're able to look at him and you're able to say to God Almighty, there was a time in my life that I recognized that I'm a sinner and I ask you to forgive me for my sin and I ask you to allow the Son, Jesus Christ, to cover me with the blood on the cross that I might have redemption, that I might have salvation, that I might be born again spiritually. If you say to the to God of heaven those kinds of things the next thing that's going to happen is your name is going to be looked for in the Lamb's book of life and if your name is found written therein you have been saved if you do not know that you know that you know especially in this time and this season of our history if you don't know that if you die today you would go to heaven I'm pleading with you please make peace with God what we're celebrating tomorrow morning is the fact that Jesus did not only die on a cross, he was placed into a tomb. His body was put into a tomb after his physical death. And just a few hours, we Christians all over the world are going to celebrate the fact that that tomb is empty. But we don't just stop there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we also go as far as to believe that that same Jesus that left this earth is going to come back again and he's going to receive those of us who are Christians, true, true born again Christians. He's going to take us to be with him forever. If I get out to heaven when I die, I get out to the end of my life and I die and the lid on my life goes closed and there is nothing else then I've lost nothing. I've tried my best to love God and to love people my entire life. If that's all there is, the lid goes closed, that's it, it's done, it's over, fine. I've lost nothing. But if there is a God, which I believe there is, if there is a heaven, and I believe there is, if there is a Jesus, I believe there is, if there is an eternity to be saved to and a hell to be saved from, and I believe there is, then, then ladies and gentlemen, I've gained everything by accepting Christ as my Lord and Savior. Maybe you're listening to this little podcast or, or live feed right now. Maybe you're just saying to yourself, you know what? I, I just wish I had that peace in my heart. You can have that peace right now by just repeating after me this prayer. Dear God, I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sin. And I ask you, please through the blood of Jesus Christ to forgive me for my sin to come and live in my heart and make me the person you have designed me to be and that is to be a follower of Christ thank you for saving me thank you for forgiving me of all of my sin in Jesus name I pray that's for a person who has not yet made peace with God if you prayed that prayer with me, behind me, along with me, the spirit of that prayer, God knows your heart, then I challenge you to tell somebody in your family circle that you've made that commitment to receive the forgiveness of Christ. Right now, I want to pray for all the believers out there that are watching this. We're going to pray together. If you're willing to pray with me, bow your head, and, and let's just talk to the, God, the Heavenly Father together. Dear God, we come before you tonight on this Saturday night before the most awesome Sunday morning. We're coming before you tonight, God, to thank you and to praise you that you are real and that you are holy and that you are seated on your heavenly throne. We're thankful, Heavenly Father, that you've sent your Son, Jesus Christ, into this world. And I cannot, Father God, imagine what it was like for you to witness all of the weight of the sin of this entire world to be placed upon your son's shoulders. 
in the form of a crossbeam, in the form of nails piercing hands, and a crown of thorns pushed upon his brow. Father, I cannot imagine what it was like to watch your son endure that hardship. But God, I am thankful that we have faith in you because you sent your son to do that for us. And God, in the in-between moments of our lives, I pray that you will find us filled with gratitude, filled with a spirit of hope and the spirit of gladness that, Heavenly Father, even if in this night we have heavy hearts, joy is going to come in the morning. And, Heavenly Father, I pray for your joy to fill the Christian heart, whether they meet on a parking lot of a church or they're in their homes or they're watching across from Facebook or YouTube or, or Father, maybe they join in with a hundred different services to celebrate the resurrected Lord tomorrow. Heavenly Father, whatever condition you find us in, I pray that in the name of Jesus Christ, you will find us praising the holy God of heaven and your son, Jesus Christ, who is at the right hand of the heavenly throne making intercession for us. Oh, God, thank you for sending your Son. And, Heavenly Father, I pray that we'll praise you like never before. God, may we, in the middle of this pandemic, realize that you indeed are in control. Forgive us, God, where we fail you. Cleanse us again of all unconfessed unrighteousness. God, we surrender and yield our lives to your authority. And we give our lives to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining in with me tonight. If you find some comfort in something that I say or prayers that I offer, please like the, the, the live feed for me and share it with somebody that may need a word of encouragement. There are so many great ministers of the gospel on live right now. There are so many great pastors and ministries, church ministries out here. Just find one that speaks to your heart and, and support, that, uh, support that effort as best you can. God bless you until we meet again. See you tomorrow morning at 11. Have a blessed night. Bye.